Good everyone, today we continue with our journal club presentation on the uh, imaging of bariatric or weight reduction surgery uh, uh, with Dr. Atrad. Last week she talked to us a little about the uh, basics, let's say, and let's see now what we will continue. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sram, Senior House of Self Radiology. Today I'm going to continue uh, our seminar on uh, bariatric surgery, uh, starting from where we stopped last week. But before uh, starting from where we stopped, uh, I'd like to make a simple review on uh, the uh, row in tie uh, type one, uh, sorry, row in tie uh, uh, bariatric surgery type. Uh, just. Uh, laparoscopic row in Y, sorry, uh, most popular procedures in the USA. The highest long-term success and the greatest weight loss. Uh, it depends on the restrictive uh, idea and also malabsorption. Uh, stomach divided into two parts, a small gastric pouch, which is a restrictive effect, have a restrictive effect, and also larger excluded stomach. The duodenum is divided into two parts. Uh, the row, which is afferent limb, and it's the most with the gastric pouch, proximally, and the duodenal duodenostomy distally. And biliopancreatic, which is the afferent limb, or wild limb, and it's the most to the duodenal duodenostomy. And this is a picture uh, of the row in Y uh, type uh, of bariatric surgery. Uh, the advantage of the row in Y most commonly perform it. About 60 to 75 percent of the body uh, weight will be lost uh, by this way. Malnutrition is unusual. Uh, have uh, like uh, any other uh, surgery has a complication. Uh, before uh, talking about the complication, uh, we are starting with the assessment of the row in Y bypass uh, surgery uh, by the upper GIT uh, imaging. In a scalp view, uh, we have to look to the gastric pouch, the small pouch of the uh, of the stomach, and also gastrojuvenal anastomosis, and also the row limb uh, with the jejunojuvenal anastomosis. Uh, looking for what? Looking for the leak, for the stricture and obstruction with the ulcers. Exclude the stomach and. The excluded stomach and biliopancreatic limb not well evaluated, uh, except when there is a, a large complication in there. And also in CT, the same like the upper GI imaging, uh, looking uh, for the gastric pouch and the row limb with the jejunal anastomosis, as shown here in this picture. Here, in this picture, this uh, is uh, upper GI uh, imaging. This is a small gastric pouch. And this is a, a, a gastro uh, 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 Here is the uh, tube uh, of the drainage uh, showing uh, the row limbs of the jejunum. This is a normal image. Here also uh, uh, another picture showing the uh, uh, normal appearance of the upper GI imaging uh, after the row in Y uh, type uh, bypass surgery. And this is also another type. Here is a small gastric pouch and exclude the stomach. These are the duodenum, uh, duodenal loops beside the uh, small gastric pouch and exclude the stomach. Row in Y complication, as I told you before, leak, stricture, marginal ulcer. We will talk about them uh, briefly and quickly. Uh, up to 5% of the patients uh, will get these types of, the, of complication, uh, mostly at the uh, gastrojuvenal anastomosis. So usually, 10 less than 10 days post-operative this complication will occur uh, and associated with the abscess peritonitis and also sepsis. Uh, here in this picture, as shown here, uh, along the side of the, uh, uh, the draining tube, you will see that uh, the contrast uh, is uh, leaked uh, from the site of the gastrojuvenal uh, anastomosis. Uh, here, the uh, white arrow showing it uh, along the tube of the drainage and also surrounding the tube drainage. So this is a collection uh, at site of the uh, anastomosis. And on the other side, the uh, axial CT section showing the uh, collection of the contrast. Uh, sorry, uh, 
the collection of the uh, fluid around the spleen. Non enhanced. Uh, an estomotic structure. Uh, this is a transi uh, the transient edema and the spasm postoperatively uh, will lead in uh, such type of the complication. Uh, usually uh, four weeks uh, after the operation will occur, three to nine percent of the uh, patient will develop this types of the complication. Usually the gas at uh, the gastro jejunal anastomosis like other complication, uh, the common site. As is shown here, the uh, small gastric pouch will be dilated and you will see there's a reflux into the uh, distal part of the esoph esophagus and here's the structures of the gastro uh, uh, site and stomosis. Here, the marginal ulcer as is shown here at the site of the gastro anastomosis, another uh, type of the complication. I talk it uh, in detail in last week, that's why I'm uh, skipping uh, over them quickly. Jejunal ischemia, there's two types of the jejunal ischemia, the acute and the chronic. Uh, the acute one present with the pain, bleeding, nausea, vomiting, early post-operatively. Uh, upper GI imaging uh, show a thickened speculated mucosal fold, submucosal edema and the hemorrhage. And a CT scan, a bowel wall thickening with the mesenteric edema and engorged uh, mesenteric vessels. In a chronic type, there's an intractable nausea vomiting secondary to the jejunal uh, stricture. Uh, upper GI imaging uh, of a chronic jejunal uh, ischemia showing a smooth tubular narrowing loss of the mucosal fold and, a non and this is due to the non-healing giant, uh, giant ulcer more than 2.5 cm. CT scan showing the jejunal narrowing with the bowel wall thickening. Here in this picture showing two giant ulcer, the black arrow showing a giant ulcer at site of the gastro anastomosis. Uh, this is the uh, anastomotic site of the gastro uh, uh, the small black arrow, and this is a giant ulcer. And this is another giant ulcer that's shown at site uh, of the uh, ju uh, Jejunal anastomosis uh, showing a speculated a thicken walled uh, mucosal fold as it is shown by the uh, white arrows. Small bowel obstruction, another uh, complication that's occur postoperatively, up to 5% of the population. And uh, this is due to the adhesion, internal hernia, abdominal wall hernia, stricture, intersusception. There are two types of the uh, small bowel obstruction. Type 1, type A, sorry, a dilated raw limb, decompressed biliopancreatic limb, and excluded stomach. While type B, there's a dilated uh, biliopancreatic limb and exclude the stomach. In a type A, the difference in between them is that uh, there will be a dilatation of the uh, biliopancreatic limb and exclude the stomach in type B, while in A, uh, still decompressed. Type C, a small bowel obstruction distal to the jejunal uh, jejunal stomach, dilated row and uh, biliopancreatic limb. Here in this picture, if you see that there's two slices of this uh, axial section in CT scan shows uh, in the first one uh, you can note the uh, uh, obstruction while in the second one you have to scroll along the slices uh, that's taken uh, through the abdomen uh, you will see this white arrow showing abrupt changes of the uh, small bowel uh, diameter uh, here as shown here so this is a type A So this is type A, uh, and uh, here's the excluded stomach, and the small uh, part of the uh, stomach are still decompressed. Sorry, uh, this one is still decompressed and not dilated. But in type B, here's the detail, but in type B, the excluded stomach is dilated. Here, as shown in this pictures, filled with the fluid and also the gas. Recurrent weight gain. A recurrent weight gain uh, usually occur with a row in Y bypass uh, surgery due to the dehiscence of the gastric staple line or the gastrogastric fistula uh, in which the food 
enters to the excluded stomach, a restrictive effect will go. Patients no longer have early satiety like before. So contrast in excluded stomach can be seen as is shown here in this picture due to this uh, opening or the uh, fistula here in between the excluded stomach and uh, the small gastric pouch. The contrast uh, seen there um, must exclude the reflux from the uh, biliopancreatic limb. The dilatations of the gastrojuginal anastomosis, another cause for the recurrent weight gain, not even uh, uh, the fistula or the dehiscence, uh, but the dilatation uh, of this uh, uh, anastomosis will lead into the recurrent weight gain. Another type of the bariatric surgery is the laparoscopical adjustable gastric banding. This is a silicone band with inflatable balloon sutured around the proximal stomach about 2 cm below the gastroesophageal junction. Created a small gastric pouch and inflatable uh, inner sleeve, uh, sub uh, subcutaneous sleeve, uh, port uh, is uh, put it. Uh, adjust the band intermittently to alter the degree of the restrictive effect. Uh, early satiety uh, by uh, decreasing the calorie, uh, uh, to work by early satiety, so decrease the calorie intake and less invasive wise the, uh, versus the uh, row in Y uh, bypass surgery. Comparable, it's a short term weight loss. Uh, uh, and also fewer complications uh, occur with the laparoscopical uh, gastric banding. The gastric banding first is performed by the, uh, CAD by the CADIR in uh, 1992, but was made popular by the uh, Bilachu and uh, Legrand in 1993. Uh, how the adjustable gastric banding is work? Uh, is work by three way. Uh, in which the small stomach pouch causing sensation of the fullness first. Number two, squeezing of the stomach uh, pouch uh, like an hourglass prolong the sensations of the full, fullness and suppress the appetite by the central action. Here, this is a gastric band and this is a port. Uh, that uh, put it under the skin in order uh, to inflate or deflate the uh, gastric band according to the patient's condition, as is shown here. What's important uh, postoperatively uh, for the gastric band is that the phi angle. What's the phi angle? This angle, uh, there, uh, you have to draw a line along the spine, as is shown here with another line along the long axis of the uh, band, as is shown here. The normal angle should be in between 4 and 58 degrees. So whenever this angle is increased, it means that the gastric band's position is wrong or it is not a fit uh, position. So it may lead into this, yes, this is called a slippage. And another thing you have to put in your mind that the gastric band should be in a block shape, as is shown here, block shape, not in a shape of a ring, because the ring shapes of the gastric band uh, indicates a slippage. These are a series of the upper GI imagings showing a normal uh, gastric band and the size of the port and uh, the size of the uh, small gastric pouch uh, with a uh, normal uh, uh, distal esophagus. Complication of the gastric lap uh, laparoscopical uh, gastric band. Uh, the most common one is the slippage, gastric erosion, and dilated esophagus. Uh, the others are perforation of the stomach, tubing access port problem, malpositioning, abdominal pain, heartburn, vomiting, inability to adjust the band, failure to lose the weight, and uh, infection of the system, fatigue, uh, or uh, malfunctioning. Laparoscopical band complication, uh, the common one uh, is the stomach stenosis, pouch dilatation, band slippage, and malpositioning band. Here's the stomach stenosis, as is shown here in this picture. Uh, 
most common complication about 8 to 11 persons occur band uh, this is due to the band over inflation or the edema excessive luminal narrowing and obstruction occur in this types of the complication nausea and vomiting regurgitation dysphagia pain these are signs symptoms of the of such types of the complication finding excessive luminal narrowing at band as is shown here dilated of the proximal uh, esophagus and stomach gastroesophageal reflux uh, with a slow impeting lack of the contrast through the stoma. So the treatment of such types of the complication is that deflate the bands plus minus the repeating the fluoroscopy. <laughs> يجي المريض يقول لك وزني بدا يقل او رجع يزيد كل على سكيب تحط السرنج فيها صايد سرنج عادي فيها صايد ندفع شويه البان شو يصير؟ ينفخ فيضيق فيقوم ما ياخذ يجي يقول لك لا هيجي من دا اموت من الجوع ما دا اقدر اوكي حط السرنج اسحب شويه تفتح سوي ديفلت ادجست بس بالسكيب بريك حتى لا يحتاج انستيزيا ولا شيء بس كل ما نروح انه من نسوي هاي الشغله إيه لازم نشربه كونتراست حتى نشوف انه هو مفتوح الباث واي لو اتس تو تايت لو تو لوز يعني القسم مره يقول لك لا ما عجبتني اصلا ما يحتاج تفوت وتشيله اسحب الصايد ولا انفتح الباث وانتهى الموضوع رجع كل شيء مفتوح فهي اتس فيري ايزي تو ديل ويز يو كان انكريز اند ديكريز يعني بيل اوت بيشنت يس ان ان اوفس از شون هير Here, the fi uh, the, in this picture, uh, band slippage uh, shows the uh, uh, large phi angle, as is shown here. It's more than uh, 58 degree. Uh, and uh, if you see, the small gastric pouch is dilated and it's filled with the uh, contrast and uh, air, as shown. And sometimes uh, you can see the gastric bands as an O sign because it has a, nor a wrong position. So uh, for the treatment of such types of the complications, deflate the band plus minus surgical correction. Uh, this, as doctor said, uh, uh, be, uh, these two pictures showing uh, before and after uh, the uh, deflations of the gastric band. Here's the first one. Uh, they uh, did uh, the fluoroscopical image for the uh, patient with the gastric band is too tight. Uh, if you see uh, the side of the uh, band is too narrow uh, and uh, there's a dilatation of the small gastric pouch with the dilatation of the gastroesophageal and the distal uh, esophagus is dilated. And uh, just by uh, removing one cc uh, normal saline from the uh, port, uh, uh, you will uh, deflate the uh, gastric band and uh, the uh, contrast uh, uh, pass through the uh, band uh, so easily and uh, the pressures uh, of the uh, proximal gastric pouch and the, the distal esophagus has been removed and returning back to its normal uh, size. Here uh, another uh, example of the gastric band slippage as is shown here. If you measuring the phi angle you will see you'll find out that it's more than 58 degree. Here also another example of phi angle more than 58 as is shown here gastric pouch is dilated uh, with a air fluid level perforation this types of the complication about less than one person and traumatic injury to the gastric wall at the surgery presented with a pain fever and leukocytosis aparagiati imaging containing uh, uh, contrast extravasated with a free fluid uh, sorry free air and uh, CT scan also showing the extravasations of the contrast with the extraluminal gas and uh, fluid collection. Another complication is the gastric volvulus, as is shown here in this picture. It's very, very rare, but it happened. Uh, band slippage, and this is due to the band slippage with the twisting of the stomach around the band and closed loop obstruction. Strangulation and uh, ischemia with the infarction are 
common in this types of the complication. Upper GI imaging converging the gastric fold as is shown here by the black arrow. Uh, rotated uh, the stomach is rotated upward to the left here uh, above the fundus with the luminal obstruction. The CT scan gastric wall thickening pneumatosis. You will uh, see all this uh, uh, feature and uh, urgent surgical removal is indicated. Intraluminal band erosion, this is another uh, complication that occur with the laparoscopic band, gastric band. Uh, late complication, this uh, happened less than 2% uh, of the uh, cases. Pressure, uh, and this is due to the pressure necrosis from the inflated band. Usually incomplete erosion, uh, uh, but rarely maybe complete erosion. Uh, in which uh, the gastric band is migrated distally into the antrum or the duodenum or proximal duodenum or may uh, migrate proximally to the gastroesophageal junction. Mechanical obstruction usually occurs with such types of the complication. Contrast, uh, as is shown here in this picture, you will note the contrast surrounding the band uh, because contrast should not be surrounding the band, it should be inside. And surgical removal is the... So the um, will be inside the stomach. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I will show you uh, many pictures of this complication. Surgical removal is the treatment of the choice for such types of the complication. Here, the uh, axial uh, CT sections showing the uh, parts uh, of the gastric band uh, with a, a contrast, if you note here, surrounding uh, part of the gastric band, and this is due to the, uh, my, uh, the erosion and then my, uh, um, the erosion of the uh, gastric band into inside the uh, gastric lumen. This is not normal. If you see the gastric band here, there's no uh, contrast surrounding the gastric band. It's normal uh, gastric band. But in the previous one, if you see, you will see that the contrast surrounding the gastric band. So this is the erosion and intraluminal uh, gastric band. Here is the migration of a fractioned gastric band into the uh, loop of a small bowel and uh, causing the obstruction of the small bowel as is shown here. Uh, and another, uh, if you if you scroll uh, through the uh, slices, uh, the coronal uh, section, you will see other complication. But here in this slice, uh, showing the uh, fraction band uh, reaching uh, intraluminal and reaching to the uh, distal parts of the small bowel. Another complication that also occur: port and band related complication, <coughs> port infection and port eversion, port tubing or band kink or disruption, these are all complication, with the tube erosion into the stomach or bowel, as I told you before. Here in these two pictures, showing this is a tube here, and also this one also tube, showing an abscess collection around the tube, as it's shown here. Uh, this is abscess collection around the tube. Another complication is that this extravasations of the contrast uh, through the tube and uh, port connection. Okay. And uh, this is uh, uh, abnormal positioning of the uh, gastric band, as is shown here. If you see, it looks like an O sign because of the abnormal position of the gastric and, band. And it's fractured. And also, yes, a fracture of the tube. So it's not working, it will never work. Like no, that. okay, yeah. Laparoscopic, uh, okay. Another type of the operation is the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. What's the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy is that Newer technique, about 5% of the bariatric surgery done in 2008. Stomach divided in, uh, along its long axis into two parts. More than 75% of the stomach is removed totally. And banana-shaped pouch will be created, as it's shown here in this picture. Uh, has a restrictive effect. Okay, 100 cc total volume will be remained 
uh, no need for the periodical adjustment, just like a laparoscopic uh, gastric band, and it is irreversible. Here in this picture, it's all done by the staples. This is a post-op upper GI imaging showing a normal uh, finding after the uh, sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, showing uh, normal dilatations of the uh, fundus of the stomach and also uh, the uh, antrum of the stomach. And this is a banana shape uh, part of the stomach that remain after the uh, sleeve gastrectomy. As is shown here in this picture, this is a normal finding. It's also a normal finding uh, by CT. These are all normal finding of the upper GI imaging after the gastric uh, uh, sleeve gastrectomy, sorry. Laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy complication. Uh, what are the complications? Is the leak stricture, gastric outlet obstruction, gastric dilatation, and the gastroesophageal reflux. Gastric leak. The gastric leak long staple lines along the greater curvature, uh, most commonly, most commonly at the proximal ends of the staple line, uh, with a uh, uh, laterally near the gastroesophageal uh, junction. Pain and a fever leukocytosis are the common complications of the gastric leak. Extravasation of the contrast with the extraluminal collection and the abscess noted here in gastric uh, leak. As is shown here, this is a leak at the sides of the uh, staple. Here also, another picture showing uh, extravasations of the uh, contrast uh, through the staples. And also here, this is large collection, and also this one is a large collection just beside the uh, sleeve gastrectomy. These are uh, the collection just under the uh, uh, right hemidiaphragm, so sorry, liver. right, uh, yes, liver. Uh, this is a, an early hemorrhage, uh, an enhanced coronal CT showing a significant hemoperitoneum. Uh, in uh, figure eight, A, and in B, enhanced axial CT uh, showing an early leak of the contrast material at the arterial face, uh, black arrow, this one. This is a leakage. Adjacent to the lower parts of the staple lines related to the bleeding from the gastroepiploic artery, confirmed and treated surgically. Uh, here is the... Uh, Gastric prosthesis uh, has been put in, uh, put for the uh, stomach, uh, as is shown here. Also, uh, uh, the material you will see that the contrast materials at the arterial face, this white arrow, has been seen around the stomach. This is due to the leakage, but in an in, in enhanced one, it's what, that? gastric prosthesis. What Actually. I don't know, I, I searched it, I don't know which, what types of the gastric prosthesis put it there. Yes, in an unenhanced. This is done for a sleeve gastrectomy. The, just this picture is present in the internet. I searched more about it, but I couldn't find out. Here in an enhanced one, you can't see the leakage, but when you are uh, putting the contrast for the patient, administer the contrast, you will see that the contrast is leaking at the side of the staple. So this is a leakage uh, happened in this case. Uh, this is another uh, image showing the abscess collection uh, just beside the staple, uh, si uh, the staple uh, place, as it's shown here and here in the axial section and in the coronal uh, section. Also abscess uh, in the lower part, you will see that there's a free uh, air and uh, collection of the abscess. And this is a drainage put it for the abscess. Uh, and you see that there's a uh, remove of the uh, abscess after the uh, drainage has been put for the patient. 
Uh, early stenosis uh, usually occur, as is shown here. You will see the narrowing of the lumens of the uh, uh, remnant parts of the uh, gastric, uh, sorry, sleeve gastrectomy, as is shown here. The lumen is very narrowed, stenosed. So uh, this is due to postoperatively due to the edema. This another picture showing the abdominal wall hematoma, as is shown here in the sagittal section and also in the axial section by the white arrow. These are the complication postoperatively at the sites of the trocar incision. Gastric stricture and the gastric outlet obstruction here, these are all due to the edema, maybe. Scarring along the greater curvature staple line, narrowing of the pouch, as it's shown. Focal stricture or long segment narrowing, uh, delayed impeding of the uh, contrast from the residual stomach, uh, dilated proximal stomach, and uh, the esophagus, as is shown here. This is a proximal, and this is a dilated gastric pouch. Uh, endoscopic or dilatation plus minus surgical revisions is the treatment of the choice for such types of a complication. Gastric dilatation uh, occur about 4.5% of the cases, inadequate weight loss, recurrent weight gain, uh, widening of the gastric sleeve, loss of the tubular banana shape of the stomach. Uh, secondary dilatation of the upper GI uh, image series performed two days after the surgery, showing a regular sleeve here. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the other ones after one year surgery uh, of, of after weight gaining uh, showing a dilated gastric sleeve without any stricture or uh, uh, obstacles to explain this dilatation. This is only uh, dilatation of the uh, sleeve part. Here, in this picture uh, showing a splenic infarction that's also occur as a complication of the sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, coronal CT, here, the triangular shape, uh, a hypo intense, uh, sorry, hypodense area showing uh, the uh, splenic infarction, peripherally based low attenuation triangular area corresponding to the splenic infarction, this white arrow, and uh, the B axial CT showing a major pneumoperitonia. Where is the pneumoperitonia? I think this one. What about these two? This is the diaphragm. Mm. This line is the diaphragm. Here is the heart. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this is all pneumoperitoneum. So that's why just and in the axial section. Heart, and this are, these are the staple lines. Uh, what about these two? Yes, so they're both oh, here there, but the yeah. major pneumoperitoneum. Free. Free. Yeah. And you can see it in here. It's very obvious. Yes. Yeah. Air under the diaphragm. Gastroesophageal reflux. Uh, increased incidence of the gastroesophageal reflux up to 20% of the cases they have a gastroesophageal reflux. Altered gastric uh, anatomy and stasis. Reflux on upper GI imaging uh, series studies. Uh, you will uh, see uh, such a reflux. And esophagitis barrettes, esophagus, and carcinoma are late complication of such types of the surgery. Um, these are uh, types of the bariatric surgery, the common types of the bariatric surgery. This one, a vertical sleeve gastrectomy, as, I, uh, as we talked about it. And this one is the adjustable gastric band. And this is a row in Y gastric bypass. And this one is a mini gastric bypass. If you note here, the small part of the stomach has been uh, connected to the uh, jejunum without it, uh, making without making uh, without making a uh, y uh, limb and also the uh, row limb of the uh, jejunal loop this is another type another type of the uh, bariatric surgery the vertical banded gastroplasty here they are using a uh, staple lines with a gastric band but this is not adjustable this is irreversible type just like a gastric uh, sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, here. Can you go back or it's not easy enough? Okay. This is called a vertical banded gastroplasty, making by, 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 staple, by the staples, they will make a small patch of the stomach here for early satiety. 
and also uh, another uh, band uh, put it on the other side in order uh, yeah, making a small stoma uh, between the so a small patch and the remaining patch. Here a CT section uh, showing the sites of the uh, stoma here, a stricture. Uh, this is a small patch that's uh, created by the uh, vertical band uh, uh, gastroplasty. And uh, this is the remaining part of the stomach that fills with the uh, contrast, as shown here. This is a section through the stoma. You will see that it is strictured, narrowed. So uh, this is the complication of such types of the uh, operation. <laughs> and this is a uh, short uh, view on the uh, different types and common types of the bariatric surgery. Uh, the gas replication, what is the difference between the gas replication and sleeve gastrectomy? Is the gas in sleeve gastrectomy, part of the stomach will be removed totally, but in a, uh, in a gas replication, no, uh, there will be suturing. Uh, as is shown here, it's less complicated uh, than the sleeve gastrectomy. And so it's just folded and folding sutured. and sutured, yes. So Sometimes there will be a reopening of these uh, sutured lines. <coughs> this one? Ileal trans 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 transposition is just like this one here. Uh, usually done for a morbidly obese patient, this one, okay. severely malabsorbed types of the uh, uh, we just cut the alien or make it yes. Mal absorption. Bypass the canal malabsorption. And this is also due to now switch. Uh, yes. Excluding of the duodenum and also part of the duodenum. So this is a gastric band, and this one is the row in Y and gastric uh, sleeve gastrectomy, and this is a duodenal switch. And these are different types of the uh, uh, bariatric surgery: vertical banded gastroplasty and laparoscopical adjustable gastric band has a port, and vertical sleeve gastrectomy removing parts of the stomach totally. And uh, this one, row in Y gastric bypass, the most common type of the uh, bariatric surgery. And this is a uh, biliopancreatic uh, diversion with a duodenal switch and biliopancreatic diversion alone without a duodenal switch. And this one is a jejunal ileal bypass. And thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's some heavy duty stuff for uh, obesity.